All right. Phew, that was close. Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir! No, it's my line. I think I really did die a little bit. Looks like we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe. How could he betray us like that? Huh? He said he'd help me. But he totally set me up! I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's got to do his job, right? It's okay. I know all about lies and betrayal. I've had them my whole life. But it really hurt this time. I felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I don't ever want to see him again. Or gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be that old guy from the park, right? Yeah, Mr. Kudo. Lover of waitress outfits and projectile seeds. I bet he's going to be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you going to be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I could take whatever he throws at me, even those never-ending bird seeds. Alright, back from recess. Court will now reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. Mr. Godot, your next witness, please. The prosecution calls the lucky old-timer who caught the show over a, s a cup of coffee. Will the witness please take the stand? Name and occupation, if you don't mind. The name's Victor Kudo, born and bred in the land of the rising sun. Honor and duty are what make me. Mind you, I could be quite emotional at times, too. You don't need to hear about that, Mr. Kudo. Just tell the court your occupation. My occupation? Kah! Listen, young'un. How much call do you think there is for kimono embroidery here? Kimono embroidery? That's what I do, or did back in Japan. I embroidered family crests on kimonos. My ancestors were embroidering kimonos before this country even existed. Wow, a real craftsman. They're a dying breed. Hey, maybe he could embroider my costume sometime. Anyway, like I said, there's not much demand for that kind of thing here. So I had to take a job working the cash register at a burger joint, pretending to smile. That burger joint would have been better off putting him in the kitchen. No, then, witness, were you with the restaurant at the time of the incident? Oh, yes. I was eating some seeds over a cup of javachino. Seeds? What do you think these are? I see. So you saw everything that happened, Gramps. Did I? Oh yes, oh yes I did. I saw it all. Then please, tell the court where all is. Sure, sure. I'll tell you. I'll tell you every last detail. He's really getting into this. The young man was reading the sports paper. The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. The man took one sip of it, and looked like he was in terrible pain, and then collapsed. That's the serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. Mr. Kudo, she is not a serving girl. Please refer to her as a waitress. Gah, yeah, you're as bad as the rest of them. All these newfangled words. What's wrong with the old-fashioned ones, hmm? Newfangled? All this talk of radios and glasses, it's wireless and spectacles, I tell you. Excuse me? Listen to me, everyone. Don't forget the old values. Don't let the old, good old days slip by. Well, um, I think it's time to begin the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Jesus Christ. <laughs> What is with this guy? Hold it! Mr. Kudo, that is a very grave accusation. Are you sure about what you saw? Victor Kudo never makes mistakes. I dot every T and cross every I. I see. My eyesight's fine. 
The doctor said I only need spectacles for reading and driving. I bet his eyes are only really fine when he's scoping out a waitress. But I'm ch And I saw what the serving girl put in the, the job and she know as well. I bet I know what's coming up and something tells me I'm not gonna like it. Your Honor, we need more clarification on what was put into the victim's coffee. I'd like to ask that the witness add what he knows about this to his testimony. Hmm. I agree. Witness, will you enlighten us, please? Yes, sir. There's no question about it. She very conspicuously put some white powder in there. Hold it! D did she really put that into the coffee? You doubt me, boy? She took some out of a small brown bottle and sprinkled it in. Couldn't she have been adding sugar? Sugar? In a small brown bottle like that? Like that? Witness, could you please describe the bottle in more concrete terms? Huh. A bottle like this, perhaps? Oh, there it is! That's the one! The bo that's the bottle of potassium cyanide, I presume. So what did the accused put into the coffee? I think it's clear, don't you? Hold it! You said I remember her well in reference to the waitress. Did she have any particular features that you can identify her by? Particular features? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. Sorry? You can see all the way up to her, her, you know. She's practically naked in that uniform. So the particular feature you recognize about the waitress is her outfit? But anyone could wear such a uniform. Even me! Mr. Wright, please spare the court of any further mental anguish from that image. <laughs> That's great! Don't get all excited, Nick. You gotta keep yourself together. I guess I got it a bit carried away. Gah, there are other things I recognize about her, too. He seems pretty sure of himself. What should I do? Sure, you saw a waitress take the coffee over to the victim. But what matters is whether that waitress was Maggie Bird or not. Quite right. Mr. Kudo, these other features that you recognize about the defendant, I would ask you to add them to your testimony. Sure, sure. There was a ribbon in her hair, and her apron straps were loose. Hold it! You do seem to remember several details about her appearance, but what about the most crucial detail of all, her face? Gah, as if I wouldn't remember that. Objection. The witness noticed the straps on the accused's apron. He's unlikely to make a mistake about her face. That's right. I can even tell you the color of the ribbon in her hair. It was red. So you see, there's nothing wrong with this witness's eyesight. Hmm. There's no doubt he remembers the waitress pretty well. What should I do? I get the feeling there's something more of this somehow. It's actually about the back. The identifying features you described are all things you would see from the back. So what? Is it possible that... You never saw the waitress from the front at all? Objection. Huh. He's got you there, Gramps. People normally talk about facial features when they're asked to describe someone. But this witness's testimony is nothing but straps and ribbons! This is harassment! I tell you, I'm not obsessed with straps or ribbons! I'm just telling you what I saw! Mr. Kudo, the court requests that you add details about any identified features, features you observed from the front, that is, to your testimony. Yes, sir. This old man's testimony is getting longer and longer. And if I can't find a hole in it soon, I'll get even, it'll get even longer, I bet. There wasn't anything that caught my interest about her when I saw her from the front. Really? So, uh, you, you didn't notice that this apron was all fucked up and shit. OBJECTION! Mr. Kudo, I would like you to please take a look at this. Cah, that filthy thing would suit filth like you just perfectly. Actually, it reminds me of what my grandson looks like just after he is done eating. Have you ever seen this before? Of course I haven't. 
Do you think I'd forget something as dirty as that, huh? Well, you half-witted clot. What? What is it? Ever since I said you half-witted clot, there's been an eerie silence in here. Mr. Kudo, this apron is the apron worn by the defendant on the day of the poisoning. Huh? And as you just said yourself, you wouldn't forget something like this. Which means if you had really seen this apron before... Yes, you know what I'm getting at. You couldn't have possibly seen the waitress from the front! Oops. Witness! You can't just oops your way out of this! Huh. Well, well. Looks like we finally have a genuine trial on our hands. Listen, Trite, here are the facts. On the day of the incident, there was only one waitress in the restaurant. That be the defendant, Miss Maggie Bird? Exactly. And when that one waitress put the poison into the coffee cup, this old guy was watching. Hmm, I hope you understand the gravity of the situation, Mr. Kudo. The fate of the defendant may rest on what you say you remember you seeing. Just tell the court exactly what you saw, Gramps. You can rely on me, Captain. My noggin's in perfect working order. I can't remember a single occasion when I forgot what burger a customer ordered. You can't remember? Probably more like he messed up so many times he's blocking it out. Very well, let's test just how good your memory and attention to detail is, Mr. Kudo. Tell us what you remember about the victim. It was another one of those pesky young types wearing a broken pair of spectacles. He had a newspaper in his right hand and the noisy brat kept rustling its pages. A young man was listening to the wireless, I remember that well. Then the serving girl in question brought over the Giavicino. The little fidget picked up the cup with his free hand and took a sip. The testimony we have just heard was to test how credible the witness's memory is. It seems to me that he remembers the victim in a great deal of detail. Oh yes, I hate those you-know-what types who are so vague about everything. How are we going to handle this, Nick? We only need to do one thing. We just need to prove that the old man's memory is shot. Just trip him up, you mean? Isn't that kind of cruel? I suppose, but it's what I do best. Alright, let's let's take a look at this in a bit more detail. So he had a newspaper in his right hand. Alright. So with the newspaper in his right hand, you say that his free hand picked up the cup of coffee. But I don't see that as being the case considering the evidence that we have here. OBJECTION! Mr. Kudo, do you remember what you were told at the start of this testimony? That this was a way of testing the credibility of your memory? I know, I know, there's nothing wrong with my memory, I tell you, nothing! If I got anything wrong, I'll eat these seeds and sing the pigeon song! Care to tell us where this is going, Trite? According to Mr. Kudo, the victim was holding the paper in his right hand, while drinking coffee with his free hand, which would make that his left. Ah, uh, what is this, kindergarten? But I would like the court to please take a look at this. That's the cup the victim used, correct? Yes, and on the rim, you'll notice the mark left by the victim's lips. Yes, there is a stain left by the coffee. If you consider where that stain is, you'll clearly see that the victim was holding the cup in his right hand. But how? Well, Mr. Kudo, the court is waiting for your epic performance. You said you'd eat those seeds and sing the pigeon song! Arr! Mr. Kudo, I'm afraid this is simply not acceptable. I think the witness had better go back to the park where he came from. Wait! If you think I'm going to stand here and listen to you telling me I'm mad, you're wrong. I don't care about that dirty coffee cup, I know what I saw. Y you still insist on your testimony. A young brat was holding the cup in his left hand. Oh yes, no question. I'm a good law-abiding citizen I am. 
It's that dead young hot bun and you, you spiky haired Yahoo, who are at fault. Who, me? Thank you, old man. We've heard quite enough from you already. Don't call me old man, old man. Been around for 68 years, I have. Can't ignore me. Listen to what I've got to say! I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but... Sure, why not hear a little more? Mr. Kudo! But this is my 16th cup of coffee, so this is your final stand. Thank you, Captain. You can rely on Victor. Oi. The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. He kept fiddling with it all the time. He was fiddling with it just before he picked up the cup, too. And then he used the same hand to pick up the cup, his left hand. We know that the victim was wearing an unusual monocle over his left eye. It wasn't a monocle, Your Honor. It was a small computer monitor often used by programmers. A monitor? You mean like a television screen? The inside of the lens is a screen that displays computer data. It's called an HMD. It's a common tool in the victim's line of work. HD, TV, DVD, CD, all these newfangled letters drive me mad, but they don't matter. I know what I saw and I'm telling the truth. It's true, he doesn't seem to be lying. And those are the facts in good old black and white. Really? Well, I'm here to test that theory. So if it's the same size, it's on the same side as the green lens of specs. Which, from this, you have to flip it around and it's his left. So if he's wearing an earpiece on the same side, that would be his left ear. Wasn't that eardrum fucking ruptured? OBJECTION! I'm not sure what the relevance of this is, but... Mr. Kudo, there is something very strange about your observations of the victim. What? You say he was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the HMD. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear without a doubt. If I could, I could only see that side of his head from where I was sitting. I don't think so. What did you say? You're no doubt unaware of this fact, Mr. Kudo, but the victim couldn't hear with his left ear. His eardrum was ruptured. Eh? Traces of medication for his condition were found in his ear canal. That's right, it's impossible that the victim was wearing his earpiece in his left ear, because he couldn't even hear in that ear. Is that true, Captain? It is. B Pigeon! Pretty pigeon! Order, order, order! This witness's testimony is completely unreliable. He only saw the waitress from behind. And he claims the victim was wearing an earpiece when we know his eardrum was ruptured. Well, Mr. Goodell? Oh, a single drop of milk is all it takes to destroy the pure black magic in the cup. This old man is my drop of milk. Captain, are you calling me a drip? This is the victim's coffee cup in which the potassium cyanide was found. The mark on the rim clearly shows that the victim picked it up with his right hand. I'll never back down, I know I'm right. The lad drank his Java Gino with his left hand. Let me put you out of your misery. Clearly the victim used both hands. He took a sip with the cup held in his right hand, and then switched to his left. That's what the old man saw. Impossible! The witness has already testified on numerous occasions that the victim died immediately after taking just one sip of the coffee. Objection. Which hand the victim used to pick up the, his cup is irrelevant, Your Honor. The facts still stand. With one hand or the other, Mr. Elg drank the poisoned coffee. Like this. Sadly, Mr. Godot, that doesn't wash. The point of this testimony was to establish whether this witness's memory was credible. And the results are clear. 
The testimony given by this witness is useless! I believe it is time to conclude today's proceedings. I am satisfied that the witness is not deceiving the court, but to be frank, his testimony is a farce. Did you have to be so frank? Take that, you pompous old fogey! I'm sorry, Mr. Crudo. Oh, Mr. Crudo, you can't reach me from there. I'm ordering the defense of the prosecution to investigate this case further. That is all for now. This court is adjourned. Wait for it. Wait! We stop now. Where does that leave me? Leave you, Mr. Kudo? Thanks to that blue-suited young upstart over there. I'm just a bumbling old man who can't even doll his T's or cross his eyes now. How is your bad memory my fault? I'm sorry, Mr. Kudo, but there's nothing I could do. I've got my mouth shut until now. But there's something else the court should know. What? There's more? To be perfectly honest, it might not be anything. But I want another chance! I want another crack at you, you young shark! Me? He's looking at me like I'm some sort of evil shogun. Well, everyone, what do you say to one final showdown? A final chapter in this eccentric old man's scrapbook! Sorry, Gramps. I've already had my 17th cup of coffee. What have you got to lose, Captain? I'll give you all the javachino you want if you come to my house after the trial. I may be 68 years old, but Victor Kudo is still a man! That's enough, witness. I believe it will be quicker for the court to just hear your testimony. You bet! Much, much quicker! I can't believe this is happening! <laughs> you better get ready, youngster! I get the picture! Just quit throwing those seeds at me, would you? He's gotta be using some sort of infinite ammo code with that box of seeds. <laughs> That's... Uh. First of all, I want to stress that this might be nothing. I'm not too sure of myself. A young boy slumped over the table as soon as he took one sip of his javachino. Well, a clumsy idiot upset the vase. He knocked it right over. It broke and the strip of cloth covering the table got completely soaked. Well, how about that? Turn things upside down, huh? Um, is that all? Yes, that's all. I remember it perfectly. Eh, you're dunning me again? You're dunning up, poor defenseless old man? No, we're not doubting you, Mr. Kudo. Don't you get the feeling there's a question hanging on everyone's lips, Nick? Yeah, so what? Probably. That's all I can think of, and I have to cross-examine this guy. You're a bird brain, that's why that's all you can think of. Very well, Mr. Wright, your final cross-examination, please. Alright. So, we have this issue of the vase here. I save vase, but I make Victor Kudo save Boz because, you know, he's... He's all timey like that. But, uh, take a look at this crime photo. And the vase is not upset at all. It's just. just OBJECTION! Mr. Kudo, this is a photograph of the crime scene. Huh. So what? Look carefully at the table. The vase is there. Intact! Huh? Lost your tongue, Granddad? No, ran out of yours, Hopscotch! <laughs> Ouch! Enough! If you throw any more seeds in this courtroom, the cleaners will be here all night! What is it now? I just remembered something. Y yes go on. The broken vase. <laughs> it was on my table. What? Oh, well, you see... It startled me when that young lad collapsed, so I stood up. That must have been when it fell over. The vase on my, the vase on my table, I mean. The vase on your table? Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, it was on my table. And that's how my groin came to be completely soaked.
<sighs> Thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned your kudos for today. I'd like to ask a question now. Have I, uh, have I been any use at all? Perhaps that's something you should reflect on yourself, Mr. Kudo. Arr, wait, wait a minute. If that's the case, there's more. I've got more to say. Oh, yes, I remember something up. Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom. Wait, listen to me! Yikes. Well, we seem to have been considerably sidetracked, and I'm still not in a position to deliver a verdict. The defendant has not been positively identified as the waitress in question. Additionally, there are two disparities in the testimony we've heard thus far. The mark on the coffee cup that the victim supposedly drank from with his left hand, and the earpiece which was inserted into his left ear, out of which he couldn't hear. Wow, Nick, you did it! I therefore require both the defense and the prosecution to further investigate the facts. Yes, Your Honor. There is one more thing I'd before I call today's session to an end. Uh, one more thing, Your Honor? The witness we just heard from, he has most insisted that his testimony should be of use, so he summarized it accordingly into the statement. Um, okay. You may each have a copy of it if you wish. Whatever. The prosecution doesn't need props like that. And oh, it's really mad, huh? Yeah, I would be too. Very well. Here you are then, Mr. Wright. There are three copies, my own, yours, and Mr. Godot's. Yes, Your Honor. I'm sorry? This isn't a piece of testimony, more like a five-year-old's apology. What the heck are we supposed to do with three copies? That is all. This court is adjourned. Alright, so we'll continue the investigation next time. See you then.